All right, welcome to the Sweet Talk. Today is Monday, February 10th, 2020. I am your host, Kim Matina. Um, I am a technology teacher, uh, a Google certified trainer, and a gold product expert for the Google for Education team. And today I have on my show, Mr. Zach Kohler. Um, he is a technology teacher in Massachusetts. Um, and I'm gonna let him introduce himself a little bit, but welcome to the show, Zach. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to have you on, but why don't you um, introduce yourself, tell tell the audience where you're from, what you teach, um, and, you know, just brag a little bit. Awesome. <laughs> um, so I teach at an elementary school in Waltham, Massachusetts. I'm a digital learning teacher, so everything I do, um, it's kind of a combination of teaching and coaching, so everything I do is co-taught which is kind of neat. So I always push into classes. So I'm always teaching alongside a classroom teacher rather than just having um, kids come to me like a specialist. So I do all sorts of things with digital literacy and computer science. Um, we do projects that like usually start with some kind of research component and then turn into a digital product at the end. Um, so things like Google Sites, Scratch, I'm trying to sneak coding in wherever I can. Um, and yeah, so all, all grade levels in elementary. So elementary, what, K through six? K to five. Oh, K to five. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, because uh, I'm a technology teacher in middle school in New Jersey, and mm -hmm. I'm in the seventh and eighth grade building. Oh, okay. So, so elementary school in my district is is really K6. That's why I asked. Every place mm -hmm. is different, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, so we have similar roles. They call, I'm a technology teacher, very similar to what you do. Um, you know, I, I push in to the classes as well. So mm -hmm. um, co-teaching with the teacher and incorporating their content into the tech part of it. So that's that's awesome. It's nice to hear that, you know, there are other people like us out there. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really excited to have you on because like I was telling you before we got on the air, um, I was at um, a, a Google, um, Google headquarters in New York attending a, a CS First um, conference, computer science conference, which included CS First, Applied Digital Skills, um, and Internet Be Awesome. And um, the Scratch Blocks add-on came up um, in the CS First section, and uh, nobody knew about it, you know? So it was really nice to be able to learn something new um, about that part of Scratch or that part of um, an add-on that can be helpful and useful in Scratch. So, I'm, and I always said, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna, I tweeted it out and I bookmarked it and I just never got a chance to play around with it. Um, so I'm glad that you're on now so that you can enlighten me and the audience on what it is. So why don't you, um, you know, introduce it and how, how did you come up with the idea of this add-on and what really is the purpose of it? Mm -hmm. So I was, last year we were working on a project, the fourth graders had to write choose your own adventure stories as part of their just normal ELA curriculum. And that seemed like the perfect opportunity to introduce Scratch. Um, so I was going through, I thought we could just do a simple, um, a simple choose your own adventure story in Scratch, but it was the first time most of them had used Scratch before. So I figured there'd be just a lot of, um, they had like maybe played around like once and they knew the concepts of the blocks, but specifically the part with the if then statement I knew that was going to be a little bit um, much for them. So I've got um, just sort of a, a sampled finished product if you'd like to see super quick just what we were working towards. Yeah, um, definitely. Let me share my screen real quick. Um, so in the story, it um, there's a narrator character, in this case, a wizard taco, because why not? Um, <laughs> and so the character, the narrator, describes a little bit about the setting. We really wanted them to get into the narrative writing piece of this. So we were teaching them how to read it in like dramatic voices and stuff like that. Um, so you can see the wizard taco is just introducing the setting, the background, and the main character is this tarantula who's trying to go after its prey for dinner. Um, so in a moment, it's gonna get to a point where it's gonna ask us to choose which prey animal it's gonna go after. So that was part of the assignment they had to research a couple different predators and a couple different prey animals. Um, and so now it's about to ask us which of those animals we would like to go after. So we're almost there, sorry. That's okay. You can choose which animal. So you get to choose the mouse or the beetle. So wh which one should we go after? 
The beetle. The beetle. All right. So you type beetle and click enter. And then it goes to another screen. Uh, the tarantula senses something small, walk by and heads off after it. A dark winged beetle, also out looking for something to eat, notices the tarantula and stops by some rocks and stays absolutely still. Because the tarantula's eyesight is not good, it doesn't see the beetle camouflaged against the rocks. The tarantula searches for several minutes, but when the beetle never moves, the tarantula gives up and walks away to look for something else to eat. And then it gives us the option to start over. Um, so with that, so they all wrote their stories, their two endings and stuff. And like I said, I figured um, like the storytelling part wouldn't be too hard, but the conditionals would be a little bit harder. So I was going through and I actually made um, like a whole, a whole mini presentation about teaching kids what are conditionals, practicing like if then else that format. Um, we like acted stuff out a little bit, but I really wanted to have a way to um, show them the different blocks that you could use with that um in scratch and like i was i was thinking of dem demonstrating the blocks just in scratch but i like to make slides when i'm showing things so i wanted to put the block materials in and i actually came across something that um a guy named tim tim radvan came up with um it's just called scratch blocks and it's actually the underlying um code if you've ever used the scratch forums um you can embed blocks without having to like take screenshots and stuff um so let me just sorry go back and go back to my screen and i'll show his website real quick. So he has this, um, it's just scratchblocks.github.io. Okay. Um, so you can use this when green flag clicked and whatever you type here, it'll turn into a block on the side of the screen. So oh, I started, okay. I started by using that because he lets you export as SVGs or PNGs. Um, but I figured like everything I do is in Google Docs. So it was an extra step to have to open this up, download it and put it into Google Docs. Um, so I figured his code is open source. He seems open to other people using his code for other things. So I took it and I turned it into an add-on inside of Google Docs. So I'm just gonna load this add-on real quick. It works in both docs and slides, exactly the same. And so if I load this add-on, now I get this little sidebar over here and I can do the exact same thing, just type the code that I want when flag clicked. Um, and if I go to the preview now, I can see that transformed into a scratch block. Um, from there, I can insert the block into the document. It'll take a second, it comes up kind of big, so you have to shrink it down a little bit. But I just wanted this as a way to be able to quickly create materials like this for students, for teachers, um, and just sort of show what these, um, what the blocks would look like without having to go into Scratch and drag them and take a screenshot, because that just seemed like a very cumbersome um, setup. Wow, so this, is, so this is really cool because I didn't have any idea, like, what the add-on did. So this is an add-on that you can create like documentation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, documentation, right. lesson materials, anything like that. Okay, wow, this is cool. So you don't, I mean, you actually, you act, you skip that whole, take a screenshot, copy and paste, and, and you had created the add-on for the doc or the slide to put in there, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Now, does it does it work for every type of commands or does, you know, like mm -hmm. if I typed in here, um, you know, a loop statement, will it give me a loop block? I'm assuming it will. But yep. Yeah. So it covers, I believe, every type, type of block, including if you like define your own blocks. Um, so the way it works, the one green flag clicked is like pretty straightforward. It's just the words for certain other blocks. Like, let's say there's blocks that have inputs. So like the say block, you get to specify what's being said. Um, there's special syntax that you use for those ones. So for the say block, for example, I would say the word say, um, and then I need a square bracket. That's the one that those are the ones that are kind of above the enter key. And then inside the square bracket, that's where I put what I want to say. Uh, hello. Um, and so now if we go over to the preview, I've got my say block there. So oh, wow. if, okay. um, one, one issue that I've seen people run into is that sometimes if you forget those extra special characters, um, then it just turns red. So if the block is red, that just means that um, you might need to tweak a little bit of that. It seems like it's fair. So again, this this is just the um, the syntax that Tim wrote in his add-on that I've just adopted. Um, but it seems pretty intuitive once you get more comfortable with it. But if you ever need, there's a link right here to this syntax guide. And this will show you, um, if you scroll through here, you can, there's a table of contents also, but it shows you how to make every type of block. Um, so in here we have like the forever loop, that's just you, type forever and then you indent your code after that. Um, 
for like the if statement, you put it the condition between um, a less than sign and a greater than sign. Um, so it looks pretty similar to like what you'd seen here. Like it's got the, the angle bracket, just like you have that little hexagon shape in there. But if you ever get stuck and don't know how to do a particular block, um, this guide will show you how to do everything, including those custom blocks. So do you ever use this as a, um, as a student assignment? So like, because if you're, well, you're in elementary school, so maybe, maybe not. Um, like if you wanted to have your kids um, learn text-based coding, um, you know, this would be a good start to mm -hmm. it because they can type it in the add-on and then actually see if their sentence or their command line is correct by previewing it uh, and seeing if it's red or if it's a, the correct color. Like, do you ever try to use it as a different, um, you know, a, a, with a different purpose, not just for teachers, but mm -hmm. for the for the students? Yeah, so I hadn't really, like, in my mind, I was just thinking of this as a resource for teachers. But it's funny you say that because someone else just, um, I think they left a review yesterday and they mentioned that exact thing, that you could use this with students and have them practice more typing out the code and using whether the blocks are red as a, um, as a, as a way to check their work. Um, which I think is like a really cool use and not something I'd thought of before, but I think it's just goes to show that like, like anytime there's something like this, like once it gets out there, like everyone can be creative with it and sort of um, come up with their own uses even beyond what I had originally envisioned. Um, so I think that would definitely be a potential next step as you're, like you said, trying to get them more into text-based coding versus just the blocks. It's kind of like a happy medium because it's still, there's still seeing the blocks that they're familiar with, but having to think a little bit more like, what do I type? Do I need the special characters and stuff like that? But is the syntax the same? So like, cause I don't remember in scratch, like I know in code.org, you can see the back end mm -hmm. of your, your block based code in, it'll show you um, the block, you know, the text based mm -hmm. code in to go with your program. But I don't remember if scratch does that. Does scratch show you the back end of the text based programming? As of now, scratch doesn't do that. Um, okay. cause I think scratch is it's the way it's set up, like from the back end, scratch is its own language. So it's not actually compiled. Like, so code.org is the blocks are compiled into JavaScript, JavaScript or scratch. Okay. Like the blocks are actually just run directly. Um, so it's not exactly like that. Um, yeah, like you said, so it may not be a perfect comparison, but it's at least sort of comparable, like saying like, maybe if you were to become like a, a programmer and use a traditional language, this might be similar to what you're doing, but it's not exactly the the back end code that you're seeing there. Okay. Yeah, cuz like that would be really that would be helpful because if the code was the same, then mm -hmm. you're actually teaching them how to how to write it with the proper syntax right yeah. from the Google Doc or the Google slide. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, then can transition nicely into JavaScript or whatnot, you know. Yeah. Um, but I would think that the syntax isn't really that much off mm -hmm. because you still have to type I'm assuming according to what you shared on your screen, you still have to type like your special symbols, um, you know, maybe arguments and, mm -hmm. and you know, different syntax that is already in text-based coding. Yeah, I think it, it definitely gets you used to just the idea, like you're saying that there, there are these special characters that you have to be aware of and like just one little mistake, like if I accidentally take off the, um, the that, semicolon. Yeah, that, that'll throw it off. Yeah, just like a semicolon in the real, um, in real coding um, or in text-based coding. Um, so I think it, it would definitely get you thinking in that way, just to be aware of those types of things. Um, I, I like this. I would I would definitely use this for middle school, mm -hmm. but I would use it, I would, I would use it more for um, the students, like yeah. have the students create some type of code or program mm -hmm. and then just to see like their logic. So like, yeah. You can do like an unplugged activity mm -hmm. and have them create the um, the reference to it using your add-on. Yeah. And then have and then let switch Chromebooks and then let the other person uh, try to read their program and actually do it and oh, see if yeah. it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. So you know, I mean, that's how. I mean, it's kind of it is kind of unplugged because you're not really. Well, it's in a sense, it's not, it's really not, but it, it could be considered unplugged because you're not on, you know, a compiler or you're not, mm -hmm. you're not logged into any type of programming language or 
application that you're using for programming. You're just using the add-on and a Google Doc mm -hmm. or a Google Slide. So it's you're not, you know, it can be either way, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I like that it's got that like the like you're sort of predicting what's gonna happen with the code without getting to see whether it runs or not to like yeah. be able to step through step through the algorithm and see if it's um actually working. Yeah, um, and like like I like because I, I would I would take that code, like say you and I were partners, and I would mm -hmm. take, I would give you my pro my Chromebook, right, and then see if you can follow my logic, mm -hmm. and actually like you know have you physically do what it tells you to do. So it may say, okay, move forward two steps, two yeah, left, move forward, go back, whatever, and then actually see where where you go mm -hmm. and if it works or not, and then you can critique it and have like kind of like pair pair programming to a point, you know, like yeah. have, have the other student fix it, you know, and then mm -hmm. vice versa, like you work together. So I, I like that for a student perspective. Yeah. And that kind of goes along with, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, sorry. Um, that sort of goes along with like, I think I've, I sort of started like the elementary version of what you're talking about. And I think what I've been doing could lead up to that. Um, so I had made a, um, for the choose your adventure story that I showed you, um, I made a, clo a code planning sheet for them where I had like a skeleton that I made of blocks with it, with this. I can show you real quick the, um, that student outline, but I purposely left stuff missing. And instead of having them like type the answers in, I just printed it and, um, they then, um, they filled it out. So I gave them this kind of skeleton. So you could see the top area up here is the introduction. Over here is where you're asking which ending they want. If the answer equals beetle, then show the beetle ending, else show the other ending. Um, so for this, they sort of, they followed along with that introduction I gave them. And I, I had these arrows here. So they just labeled what each section was supposed to be for. Um, but I think then like what you were saying, instead of giving this to them as a physical sheet of paper, it could be like they're, they're planning their code just on the, on their devices, like maybe you give them the text to start with and say, now, now fill in the parts that are missing with whatever we need to do. Or maybe you only give them the first half and they need to plan out the second half before they get into um, actually writing their code. And that also kind of connects once you get to um, like college courses and stuff, there's a lot of, you have to write things in pseudocode, which yeah. is um, like not a, kind of like how this isn't exactly like JavaScript or something, but it represents what the code is. So also having them separate the algorithm from the specific coding language and be able to like plan that out and express themselves in more general terms. Yeah, I was just thinking that it's like pseudocode. So you can actually give them that that template and have them actually fill it in and that can be considered their pseudocode. Mm -hmm. Or they can take that template and then translate it into English, right? Yeah. And then that can be part of their pseudocode also. And then that'll prepare them for the for the actual code in part of the project. I do mm -hmm. like that. This is really I do like this. I really Thanks. do. I'm gonna I'm <laughs> now that I had you on I'm having you on and you're going over it. I I see the value in it. I definitely mm -hmm. I'm definitely gonna incorporate it because it it you can definitely use it with Scratch, but the um, the concepts are still the same. It doesn't matter what application it is, mm -hmm. you know. Like like I use a lot of Microbit in my class, mm -hmm. um, so it's again it's block based coding as well. But you can still take the concepts and 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 create it in in the Google Doc. You know, I mean, obviously the blocks aren't going to be exactly the same, but the mm -hmm. concept, the pseudocode concept, and everything you know, you can incorporate that. I'm, I'm not going to make a, make a micro bit, <laughs> <add -on>. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. but you know, it, it, it's, I mean, it's definitely doable. You could do it, you know, because mm -hmm. it, there's, there's definitely a purpose there. You, you know, it's, re you can take that and use it as a student, um, student assignment, or you can take it for teachers and they can make documentation. So, you know, you know how it is. Educators are so creative; they come mm -hmm. up with their own ways and they tweak it to, to make it more purposeful for them. So yeah. that's the way I would say I would use it. Because mm -hmm. what I do, even with with the micro bit, is I take screenshots, obviously, like what you were doing, and I incorporate them in Google Slides. See, we hate how we think alike, mm -hmm. and um, you know, so that the kids can actually follow along in the directions and then try to code 
co- try to code their program from my directions, you know, uh-huh. so, you know, this for me, if it was in, in micro bit, it would be awesome. But mm-hmm. I, uh, you know, I have the micro bits, so I try to use them, yep. you know, so, but this, this is awesome. Like if you're a scratch user mm-hmm. and you're using CS first and you're a scratch user, you know, this add on is, 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 is so priceless in my opinion i think it's great because it serves like a multi-purpose and i'd be curious if you um when you hear feedback from people i'd be curious to hear how how many other people are using it in different ways Mm -hmm. you know to customize it for their needs so you got to share yeah definitely no definitely let me know because i'll push this out like i i mean like i'll you know what the problem is too is like some people are nervous to teach computer science mm-hmm. and they are intimidated because they don't know the content uh, but this would be a great way of getting the teachers like familiar with it mm-hmm. without really blowing anything up right because that's yeah. what everybody's afraid of you know um you know so this would be a nice way where people can um learn the code mm-hmm. incorporate the the you know the color coding blocks the logic right in a google doc uh-huh. and then they can they even can create programs or pseudocode that don't work mm-hmm. and then have the kids test it out and then let them see hey is this this doesn't make sense and oh then, yeah you know like they can do it that way too like you don't always have to make the program work let give a couple pro- programs to the kids that don't work and then let's see if they <laughs> see if they figure it out like where is the problem you know so i i'm i can't believe it that's really cool i really i'm yes. really i'm real i i'm a computer science person so mm-hmm. for me this is like awesome i'm mm-hmm. i'm definitely going to i'm definitely going to utilize it now that i'm familiar with it and you introduced it to me so and the audience I'm, i'll definitely push it out and see what kind of feedback i get i can push it out to the other technology teachers mm-hmm in my district and then um because they're teaching um like i said k6 and i know they incorporate code in in their curriculums in their classes so i'll push it out to them um and see what they what they do with it and and you know and then i'll let you know if i hear feedback i'll definitely let you know awesome yeah i would love to hear because th- this is so like like even just this conversation we've had you've come up with so many things that i never even would have thought of and it's just so interesting that like to see where like even like I, I created the add-on, but like I'm not like the sole expert in like how to use it. And like you haven't seen it before, but you're already thinking of all these things that like I had, had never even occurred to me. And like you were saying, it's just so cool how cre- creative teaching is. And like depending on your different needs, there are so many different ways to use all of these tools and incorporate them and um, think of stuff like that. So I'm really interested to hear what other people have to say and if people have other ideas of how to use it and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll definitely let you know. I mean, honestly, that's like, that's why we do like, that's why we collaborate, right? Like, that's why I'd like to have people on to talk, to learn from each other, share, because I didn't hear anything about this until, uh, you know, when I went to the workshop in Google headquarters, and I didn't get a chance to look at it. And I was glad that you were going to be on um, and and show it off, because this is what I was thinking of. (laughs) when I saw your name. So Mm. um, I'll definitely let you know feedback because, you know, sometimes things come out and like for me, middle school, I, I don't want to, you know, you, you want to give something that's on their level. Mm. I don't want to give, you know, students in seventh and eighth grade, you know, elementary school material. Um, But this, you can work either way and I can take this and I can make it, um, I can differentiate it, first of all. Secondly, I can um, take it and use it as a teacher resource. And then I can use it for students. They can they can create their own. I can give, like I said, I can give the students programs or pseudocode and see if the logic makes sense or if it does make sense and test them out and see, you know, see what it's all about. Like let them all collaborate in groups and and use all of those computing skills that come with computer science Mm -hmm. and try to figure all this out like this would be a great tool to use during computer science education week no Mm -hmm. doubt no doubt in my mind you don't even have to use scratch just use the add-on 
and have them use this for like a day or two two class periods and then just have them like dive into it and see where it takes you hmm. you know definitely i'm 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 going to definitely share this out this is to me i it's very valuable you know because mm-hmm. I, I like the flexibility with it being open where i can differentiate yeah you know which is nice so now is it the same i know you shared it in you show it off in Google Docs, but what yep. about Google Slides? Is it the same type of format? Yep, it's um I can show you show you real quick in my on my screen, sorry. Um, but it's exactly the same. The sidebar is the same. It's actually um the like the underlying source code that I have for it, there's like maybe three functions that are different between the two. Um, but it's almost identical, which is hopefully good. So it's easy to um like translate this between different apps, but so the sidebar is still over here. This looks the same when flag clicked. Um, so I can insert the block onto here. And um, again, it's kind of big, so you have to resize it. But other than that, it's exactly the same. You can preview. You can do everything um, in those two apps. OK, so here's a, here's a question for you. When you mm-hmm. put in a different um, command, just type just type something. It goes into it. It, it puts it in as a separate image. Yeah, so if I were to insert this one now, um, it'll put it in as a separate image. That's um, one thing that I'm hoping to get to. Um, This is just something I do in my free time, so I don't know if I can promise this. But I would love for there to be a way that you can edit these after the fact. Because if you have like a longer script, you would have to um, kind of rewrite what you've already done. Um, So I've seen a couple other atoms that do similar things, but I'd love if there was just a button right here where you could click on it and like whatever you typed into here shows back up on here, even if you didn't just type that. But for now, yeah, it'll just, every time you click insert, it'll add a new block or a new image. So, so click, so type one more command in there. So we get another image. One more here. So it's just going to keep. So it's just going to, oh, so you have three different images. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. With the three. Okay. I thought it was different. I thought it was, um, I thought it was three separate images, not. Oh, not like connected to each other. Not connected to each other. Yeah. yeah. If okay. you wanted to, you could do it. Um, you could just do these one at a time, so I could make like my one flag click for, first. Oops. It would help if I could spell things. So I could insert this one by itself, um, and then I could do say, oops, hello insert this one separately and now these are going to be two different images and then i mean on the screen as long as you make them the same size you could connect them if you wanted to like connect them like together have like a drag and drop or matching type thing um so that could be a way if you wanted that effect to be able to move these separately so you just remove the when flag clicked yeah okay Mm -hmm. what all right so take out all right so because i can't do this you're doing it you're driving here so take, (laughs) take all that out all right so start over again, take out, say hello, and then put in there when green flag clicked. Right? Yeah. Hit insert. Okay, now insert a new slide. All right. Yeah, yeah, make it blank. And now take out when flag clicked and put in say hello. Okay, so you can put each block on its own separate. Oh, yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, slide. I actually like it better in Google Slides Mm because then what you can do here is you can actually have, you can, okay, so here I go, I'm going again. (laughs) You can actually create like a template. Oh, yeah. And then, and then just you have a template and they put the block in there and then you can have them respond. Hmm. So, you know, they can actually, they, they can actually type the pseudocode or the meaning of the blog yeah. in the comments uh, of the slide or in mm-hmm. the speaker notes or somewhere in the slide. Yeah. Where, you know, so it's a little bit more, it's broken down into a little bit more steps, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I like it better in the slides than the doc. Yep. But yeah, I like that. Like all the, the, like making it interactive and stuff like that. That would be really cool. Yeah, this is cool, Zach. Good job. Thanks. Can I show you one more thing that might help with the micro bit real quick? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
So if you come up into the syntax guide, once again, this is part of like the underlying stuff. So this is just what um, Tid Tim Radvan made. But if okay. you scroll down to hacks and you go to color and shape changing, um, you can actually, there's syntax that lets you set up um, like custom colors and stuff. So if you wanted, um, like let's say this example, I don't know if you can see it very well, but this says, say I'm not a motion block just in the brackets, but there's two colons and the word motion. And then that turns this into a blue block as if it was from the motion category. Um, and you can even do it, this one down here says think arbitrary colors, and then it's two colons and um, a pound sign and like a hex color value. So it's this unique green color that's not actually part of scratch. So if you wanted to create like your own custom custom blocks that kind of match the micro bits, you can set it up with whatever you want, like with the um, with the word or if there's like a like a space for input or something like that and then set a custom color over here. And then you'll get a block that maybe looks more similar to microbits or any other language that um, isn't exactly like Scratch, but still uses similar looking blocks. So it, does that save? It, um, it, I, the image saves over here. You would, you would just need to, um, for each of these blocks, like if you wanted another one of these green ones, you would need to put in the colon and the, um, the custom color at the end. So you, you would have to do that for each block that you type. Yeah, but like, now I did it for this one session. Mm -hmm. Now I, w I go back in the next day. Are all of my settings there for the hack for Microbit? Yeah, so I'll, to it? the blocks on your slides are just images. Um, so whether this, like, even if you completely deleted the add-on, these the blocks on your slides are going to stay as is because it would be like if you saved a picture to your computer and like uploaded it. Um, the no, only I mean I mean the hack part. Um, well, f so for the hack, you just, um, you're just for each block that you wanted, like if I wanted another green block, at the end of this line, I would put my two colons and this custom color. So you would need to put it like manually type that color for every for every green block you wanted or whatever color you wanted. So it's a, it's a little bit more work, not quite as intuitive as the scratch ones. Right. Um, but, but I mean, like what once I type it in one time, mm -hmm. just say I type, I type this in one time. Yeah. Will it be available there all the time for me, or do, or do I always do I have to go in the next time and define it again that it's the green color, not purple? You, yeah, you will need to define it each time. Yeah, that it's okay. that color, just with this extra, um, the two colons and the color at the end. And the color, the hex color. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, that I mean that that might be something <coughs> to think about. Um, no pressure or anything, <laughs> yep. you know, expanding to expand over to micro bit. And then, um, you could, uh, have the add on just for micro bit, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. then just do that. And then you don't have to hack the scratch part. Yep. Cause quite, you know how it is. You're, you're a teacher. You, <laughs> teachers aren't going to do that. Yeah. There's not enough time to, there's not enough time customize to customize every single Right. If you had to do it one time and be done, okay, I yep. can put time into it, but I'm not going to do that every time. Yeah. You know, that's, that's way too much time. So, but that's something to think about, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's good that it's there, yeah. you know, so maybe the computer science teachers would, would hack it and do it, but I yep. personally wouldn't mm -hmm. do it, you know, but Yeah. that, that's great. I'm, I'm impressed. That's awesome. Good Thanks. for you, Zach. Good for you. I'll definitely let you know about the feedback. I'll pass it along. I'll see um, the computer teachers, the technology teachers this Friday during our mm -hmm. PD day. So I'll share it with them and email it to them tomorrow and share it out. So, awesome. so if I hear anything, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Well, that wraps up our show for tonight. Thanks, Zach, for being on. I'm so happy that you were able to share. And I actually uh, <laughs> learned, you know, what I was looking forward to learning from that uh, that Google conference that I went to. So thank you for, for that. I'm going to be sharing it with uh, a few people on Twitter that were in the PD with me that day at Google headquarters. So they'll, unless they, unless they already played around with it, but if not, I'll tag them in there and at least they'll be able to see, uh, you know, watch the episode and, and visit the show notes as well. So um, awesome. what I'm going to do really quick is share my screen. So let me get into here. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right. So uh, if you'd like to um, 
<clears throat> visit my website, you can go to the Sweet Talk. That's the S U I T E talk.com. And on my homepage, you'll see um, the latest episode here. And uh, if you'd like to be a guest on my show, you can fill out the guest form and I will uh, be in touch with you as soon as I can. Uh, right now I'm scheduling for June. I can't believe it. It's, it's been, uh, what a ride. This has been great. Um, and you can check out my schedule here as well. Uh, there's quick links here. Um, <clears throat> any trend in episodes I'll post here as well with the podcast. Uh, you can also join the Facebook community. Uh, any episodes that I did in the past, if you click on the episode page, uh, the YouTube um, video will be listed here as well as the Wakelet show notes will be here as well. Um, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, my newsletter, um, podcast. I am on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, and Google Podcasts as well. Um, and one other thing I just want to um, to share, uh, two actually, two things. Jamboard, um, this is my Jamboard page here. If anybody wants to know about Jamboard, I updated all my resources for it. So you can check the Jamboard page out. I'm actually going to be presenting at the EdTech for Future conference on uh, Jamboard. It's called Get on the Jamboard Train, and that's free. And that is a three-day online conference um, it's a global conference on February 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. So go check them out. Um, the Google Classroom page, um, actually, uh, Alice Keeler and I wrote a book about stepping up to Google Classroom, and it should be available um, hopefully by May or June. So if you want to be updated on the latest news about it, uh, you can subscribe to her newsletter, and uh, she will... Um, inform you so you can sign up there and you can um, be be in touch with some latest updates but with that said I'm going to stop sharing my screen and go back to Zach awesome. so thank you again Zach it was really nice to have you on it was a pleasure meeting you and um, stay in touch okay yes definitely thank you so much like I said I've learned so much about my own add-on which is like super <laughs> cool um and like, I'm just excited to like try all these things and hear how other people are using it. And yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll have you back on toward the end of the year mm. when it gets closer to like computer science education week. Mm -hmm. And then um, we can both reflect and then see, you know, we can give it a shout out and then we yeah. can kind of like see where we're all at with it. So mm -hmm. would you consider doing that? Definitely. That okay, would be awesome. Cool. I'll send you the information and then, you know, maybe sometime in November or the last or maybe the end of October because uh, Computer Science Education Week is usually like in December. Mm -hmm. So it always sneaks up. Yeah, it always sneaks up. So maybe October or November we can reconnect. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Great. All right. Well, until next time, thank you for joining and watching. See ya. Bye. Yeah.